Hey, Sandy, if um, I think we're having a little GoToWebinar issue. Do either of the two of you see on GoToWebinar where it says begin broadcast or start broadcast? Let's see. It would be on your uh, GoToWebinar control panel. Yeah, it's usually that big red thing, but I don't see that. Mm -hmm. Micah, drop downs? Micah, do you happen to see anything on your um, GoToWebinar uh, control panel where it says start broadcast? It's usually no, I've got the, yeah. I've got the record button. I've got settings, change presenter. All right. Um, what I'm going to do? I'm going to leave the webinar real quick, and then I'm going to rejoin. I'm going to try that one more time. Um, oh, here now it just showed up. It just showed up. Go ahead and try it, Sandy. It says until ten, you still on hold. Start broadcast. Yeah, go ahead there and hit start broadcast. I'll hit it now. Okay. All right. Here it goes. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Joe Bicella, Director of Client Success here at Chaken Analytics, and I'd like to welcome you to the stock buying secret that beats 80% of pros. Our, web our presenter today is Sandy Chaken, co-founder of Chaken Analytics. Throughout this presentation, please submit your questions through the GoToWebinar chat window. Uh, Michelle Greenblatt and I will be available to respond to your questions. As a reminder, this webinar is being recorded and will be sent to all registrants. Now, before we get started, we would like to introduce a guest to our webinar, founder and CEO of Wall Street I.O., Micah Lamar. Micah is an expert stock and options trader with a specialization in taking complex cycle analysis indications and breaking them down into easy to follow as steps. Micah authored the Wall Street I.O. Stock and Option University program and is most famous for writing the number one rated Apple Investment Strategy Guide, which covers the seven steps to boosting swing trade probability in Apple and in Google. Now, to get us started, here's Micah Lamar. Hey, thank you so much for the great introduction. How's it going, everybody? I'm Micah here. Really excited, super excited to have Sandy on uh, for our audience and the chicken audience here. Um, Sandy and I have been good friends for a few years now. Sandy, of course, is uh, the co-founder of Chicken Analytics, which is a groundbreaking stock research and analysis platform. What's amazing about the story with Sandy is her prior experience she started investing in 2012, and she's built a killer portfolio that continues to outperform the S&P 500. I think she's going to be offering a lot of insight to everybody who is both a new and advanced trader today, showing you how in very little time every day you can really quickly and easily find great stocks to pick using the Chicken Analytics platform. Um, but more importantly, what I love about Chicken Analytics is how easy it is to use and also how great the fundamental analysis analysis is. A lot of the, the work that I do is mostly technical, so I always turn to Chicken Analytics for all of my fundamental analysis. So with that being said, thank you so much, Sandy, for coming on, and I can't wait for your presentation today. Mika, thank you for that lovely introduction. Um, and, um, and let's get started. We're thrilled to be presenting to your audience today, as well as the uh, Chicken uh, loyal follow followers. So, uh, I first must get this uh, disclaimer, though, uh, out of the way. So, let me just quickly read this. Chaikin is not registered as a broker-dealer or investment advisor, either with the SEC or with any state securities regulatory authority. Chaikin does not recommend the purchase of any stock or advise on the suitability of any trade or investment. The information presented is generic in nature and is not to be construed as an endorsement, recommendation, investment advice, or any offer or solicitation. Buy or sell securities of any kind, but solely as information requiring further research as to suitability, accuracy, and appropriateness. Users bear sole responsibility for their own investment research and decisions. Okay, love to get that out of the way. All right, what I like to do is always start with the problem. You know what's going on in the market. Uh, you know where where are we kind of from a mindset point of view? And I think a lot of us, a lot of what I'm hearing on the news and on CNBC, etc., is is all this talk about how volatile everything is, and are we headed into a bearish mode, and uh, all this kind of negativity. Well, if you look at the research that First Trust Portfolios has done, and they're a, they're a partner for uh, with us. Uh, they say it's not a recent phenomenon, and they say actually each year you can expect the market to experience a significant correction. 
And in the last 30 years, the annual correction has averaged 14%. And I'm going to show you some stats on where we are today that's going to blow your mind because we're dead on with 14%. And they also say that those who stay the course were rewarded more often than not. So here's the, here's the, uh, the chart, which, which is like a picture perfect for what First Trust is saying. You know, from the February 11th low, back go, comparing back to the May 2013 high, the market was down 14%. Uh, however, as of today, going back to the February 11th low, we're up 14%. So this is right exactly what First Trust is saying is a normal reaction in the market. So, you know, therefore, what the newscasters like to make news with and say everything's so volatile. Uh, it's really perfectly normal. But it has been a problem for us as individual investors in that our biggest challenge is really overcoming our emotions and not letting those get in the way. But unfortunately, that's easier said than done. And while the S&P has grown an average of almost 10% for the past 20 years, individual investors have only averaged 2.5%. You know, and why? People are people, and uh, we let our emotions get get in our way. Uh, another challenge we're facing as individual investors is if we're investing in actively managed mutual funds, we find that they underperform the S&P 500. In fact, 80, 81% of actively managed mutual funds have underperformed, and this is true um, for the last 12 years. So it's not just now, but it's historically over the last 12, 13 years. And on top of this, if you're invested in mutual funds, and a half percent expense fee a year. So uh, underperform and pay one and a half percent is not exactly the, the road to riches. So our solution at Shaken is to find those head, hidden winners. And that's what I'm going to be going over today. I'm going to show you, as Mika said, exactly how I find stocks uh, probably that you've never heard of, like Senta, you know, Deluxe, Knoll, NCI Building Systems. I mean, these are all stocks that have are in my portfolio, and I they're not household names. So how are you going to find these? Well, there's a very easy solution to that, and that's what I'm going to walk you through today. Um, as Mika said, I'm, I'm really living proof that you don't have to be an expert to make good decisions and find winning stocks. I've done this strictly using uh, Chaikin Analytics since 2012 and prior to that I was always in mutual funds or money was managed by a, a wealth manager because I didn't feel confident doing myself. But since I've been managing since 2012 I have been outperforming and I have been able to find and invest in stocks um, like these. So well the stocks that I'm in are up 21 to 65 percent or so year to date. You know, the S&P is up about uh, less than four. And I would say if you want average returns, then just go into an S&P 500 index fund and invest in that. But if you really want to outperform and have outsized returns, um, you know, with me for this next hour, and I'm going to show you exactly how I do it with a very simple and quick. So here's a little preview of what I'm going to be sharing with you today. This is a stock that I owned up until last week, Senta. Uh, as you can see, it's up 65% for the week. This is a Chaikin Analytics chart. Um, and I'm going to be explaining this chart later on, but I just wanted to give you a quick, quick preview of showing you that everything you need to know is laid out on this chart. Uh, you've got the fundamental and the technical research right here uh, to make an informed decision without accessing a lot of other places other than, of course, uh, Mika's payday cycles, uh, which we've been coordinating with and complementing with uh, for, for several years now since we've uh, been doing these webinar exchanges and partnerships. Uh, but I bought this stock at 17 uh, back in here on this yellow arrow, and this little triangle here is one of our buy signals, which I'll be explaining, but I bought this uh, right before they reported earnings and after they reported earnings, and then it spiked up another 12% last week when SunTrust put out a buy recommendation. 
So I cashed out up here uh, last week, you know, for a nice 21% profit in what less than two months. So those are the types of examples I'm going to be sharing with you today. So my promise is you're going to discover my secret to beat the pros and how to find winning stocks uh, quickly and easily. And I think quickly and easily are really uh, critical uh, thoughts here in that uh, none of us have time today to do what we'd really like to do. And I think we live in a, I, I say we live in a, a time-starved economy. We're all time poor. <laughs> um, we all, as far as, as far as I can glean, most people don't have time to do what they want to. So we've got to make things quick and easy. And we've got to celebrate. I mean, the money, the reason we're all in this market is to make money, right? Um, also, it's fun. I've, I've really been enjoying it. But bottom line is we all want to make profits, and the profits allow us to do some pretty cool things, like not only fund our retirement plans, but also to spend some of this money along the way. So the pictures you see here are from vacations that have been taken with the proceeds um, that I've earned. From my winnings, this top right picture is from Turkey. When Mark and I went to Turkey two years ago for a wedding, added on a week at the beach. This is all from one dock that I was in, Southwest Air, in 2014. And I paid for this trip with, with that uh, winnings as, and, and had money left over. Uh, last year we went to Vail, which is the bottom right, uh, for an international dance performance because I'm a big fan of performing arts. Uh, that again was on my, win my winnings. And most recently, two weeks ago, we just got back from Rome where we spent a week on vacation again with, uh, with money that I earned in analytics. So why should you spend time with me next hour or so? Um, well, I've beaten the S&P 500 for the last four years since I started investing. And since the research shows that four out of five pros have underperformed the S&P, that means that I've also outperformed four out of five pros. I found winners in 2015 like American Woodwork, Woodmark, which was up 98%, and Activision, which was up at 94%. And this year, I've been in Santa. Uh, which I showed you up 65%, Noel up 32%, and NCI Building Systems also up 31%. This spending 15 minutes a day, as I say, it's got to be quick and easy um, because our time, our time is precious. So I'd just like to step back for one uh, minute here and just take you through kind of how I got to start investing in stocks in the first place. Um, it started really back in the 70s and 80s when I worked at Elizabeth Arden L'Oreal and then the Franklin Mint. And I had set up the 401k plans, which the companies offer, which was great. And the choices they offered were in mutual funds. Um, and I was fortunate to have picked Fidelity Magellan Fund, which was actually the most uh, successful mutual fund ever. So that was cool. Uh, and also Leg Mason's uh, Value Trust, which was managed by Bill Miller, which was another uh, terrific uh, investment. So that went along quite well until my career really grew and I got busier and busier and the fund grew and grew. And I thought, boy, you know, I don't know anything about what I'm doing other than looking at uh, past returns. Uh, I don't feel confident managing this kind of money, so I, I think I really better find a professional to do this out here. So in asking around, I was referred to an investment advisor by a friend of ours, and I engaged him. And the first thing he did was to sell the uh, mutual funds that I was in and put me in about eight or ten mutual funds of his choice. Um, Mark and I weren't together at the but in talking to Mark later about this, he says that's, that's pretty typical for what wealth managers do. So that was okay, and it, it went okay for a while. But then um, we all know what happened in 2008 when the whole you know, financial market collapsed. And I kept calling him you know, as early as September of 2008 when everything started to first kind of teeter. I said, 
don't you think we should sell these these uh, investments because it, it's pretty clear everything is is south. And the answer I always got was, oh no, don't sell. Um, it's all going to come back, and we'll just you know it's it's better just to stick with it, and and uh, it'll all come back. And because I didn't have the confidence to overrule his decision and demand that he sell, I kind of rode the rode, rode the uh, ride all the way down 40%. And that was a pretty devastating time in my life because I'd worked really hard to build up this retirement plan. And I really had given up a lot of you know nice vacations and things I could have spent the money on because I, I felt it was the prudent thing to put it away in this 401k plan and save for retirement. So watching 40% of it disappear was pretty devastating. But it also proved to be a turning point in my in my in my life, actually, in that I said, "Okay, um, this is awful. I don't ever want to have to feel like this again." <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have to take control of this. And I'm going to pause here for a second, ask you in the audience if you'll just chat in your thoughts on this. If any of you have had a similar experience. Of losing that kind of money, either in 2008 or now, you know, and and what kind of was the outcome of it? I mean, you know, for me it was a wake-up call, and and it was a wake-up call to say, boy, you know, you've got to really take control and be involved. And even if we are using a wealth manager, and many of our customers do, that's great. Um, have to be involved. You know, the, the important thing I think is to stay involved. And be part of the conversation. So it's perfectly fine, actually. We, you know, we encourage it to work with a investment advisor, but also let Chaikin be your barometer and let, let that be your measure of whether it's a stock or an investment you want to get into or not. Um, so I see I see a lot of yeses here. Um, Don blew up my investment account. And ill, same experience, fired my financial advisor. John came back, that's good. Harvey had the same experience. Uh, Kristen, devastating to lose your hard earned retirement. Yeah, so unfortunately, a lot of you can empathize with the way, the way that I felt, and sadly, you felt the same way too. But, you know, let's turn that positive and say, okay, this isn't going to happen again. And the reason it's not going to happen again is because I'm going to get involved, and I can do it. Uh, and and because I have done it, I've now uh, this portfolio has now gone over three times what it was in value when I took it back in 2009. Uh, if I can do it, you can do it. You know, and that's really my motto all along. Um, yeah, as Thomas says, no one cares for your money as you do. I say that all the time, Thomas. Absolutely. Um, you know, nobody cares about your money, as Thomas says, more than more than you. So it's important that we all have a say in the conversation, be part of the conversation. And if you're working with an advisor, that's great. You know, but still stay in the game. You know, stay involved. So with that said, let's look at some of the challenges that are facing us today. Um, what is it that's holding you back? You know, what is it that makes you pause before you hit that buy or sell uh, trigger? Uh, emotions. You know, I've already related that. You know, big part of uh, in individual investors' challenge is to overcome the emotions uh, that are bound to get in our way. Uh, is it that you don't have the right tools, that you don't feel confident, you don't feel you have enough education? Um, if, again, you'll, you'll put those answers for me into the uh, chat view, that can give me some great insight uh, going forward in how I frame the conversation. Joanne says education is the key. Uh, John says they all say you're in it for the long Paul, but I'm 71. That's okay. You've got a lot of good years left, John. Make the most of them. Don't have a directional edge, risk management, fear of loss, lack of conviction, lack of uh, confidence, says Richard. Information overload, says Joseph. Tools and education, says Charles. Kristen, lack of time, confidence and tools. Walter, fear of losing. 
getting in and out, says Bruce. Timing. My broker is my son-in-law. Okay, well then help him out. You know, help him out by guiding him with uh, with Chicken Analytics. All of the above. <laughs> okay, okay. I think we're all in really close agreement here on what we feel are the challenges, and because those are very similar a answers to what I get uh, every time I ask this question, um, I'm already prepared, and so I'm going to be answering one of those challenges uh, on this presentation and overcoming them. So you're going to end at the end of this arrow, 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 at the end of this hour, excuse me, with uh, five steps to find winning stock. So let's go through these because this is really the secret sauce and this is what's really going to allow you to outperform the market and find uh, winning stocks. And the examples I'm going to be using are from our financial freedom fast track on Chaken Analytics the stock charts uh, that are available on iPad as well as desktop under, under one subscription. I prefer to use the iPad screen, so most of those are going to be on the iPad. So let's get into what the f is, um, and that's to trust the proven methodology. The methodology we uh, depend on is the power gauge rating. As you can see here, it's a very simple rating. What this does, and this is the centerpiece of everything I'm going to be talking about from here on in, um, so I'm going to spend a little bit of time on this. Um, but the power gauge rating is a 20-factor model that analyzes complex information, puts it into an algorithm that my husband, Mark Chaikin, created, and then comes out with a very simple rating, going from very bullish to very bearish. As you can see here, it's quite simple, right? I mean, anybody can understand this, don't you think? But it's not simple underneath. You know, I say there's always a lot more going on than meets the eye. There's actually 20 factors that make up this model. And the way this all got started is, is many of you might be familiar with Mark and uh, through his Shaken Money Flow, which is basically on every stock charting and technical analysis package uh, worldwide. And he created that 30 some years ago for the Wall Street pros. And for his 30, 40, 45 years on Wall Street, he created tools for professionals so that they could make better decisions with their clients' money. So when he sold his company uh, before the whole meltdown to a division of, of Reuters and, and retired. But after the meltdown, when he and I got together and he could see the angst that I was going through, um, and he could see what I'd done, what I did, which um, in 2009 I took the money out of the control of the financial manager and I opened up a Vanguard self-directed uh, account and put my money in there and put it into an S&P 500 index fund until I could figure out what to do. Well, he saw literally billions of dollars going into these same type of self-managed accounts that individual investors were taking out of the traditional brokerage firms, like I did. And he said, you know, Sandy, you're taking money out and putting it into a fund that you're managing yourself, but you don't have the education or the tools to know what you're doing. And I said, yeah, you're absolutely right. So what do I do? So he said, well, I'm going to create a set of tools for individuals like you. So they have the same edge as the pros. They have the same tools, the same professional quality workstation that the pros have. But it's going to be in a format that you can understand. Because I don't know if any of you have looked at a professional you know, stock chart that they look at every day. It's like incomprehensible to me. However, what Mark created is not. So what he did over the course of a year or so is he tested about 200 different factors that go into uh, the price of a, of a stock, that affect the, the price of a stock. He whittled it down to 20, which are the 20 factors you're seeing here, and they're grouped into four major components. And you can either look at the, you know, over, you start with the overall rating, but if you're like a Warren Buffett type of a investor, you might put more emphasis on financial metrics. Whereas if you're a Jim Cramer type of investor, you might put more emphasis on earnings performance. You can do this. You know, you can get a, a power gauge rating on any of those four components, or you can drill down and get a power gauge rating on each of those five components that make it up. 
I've highlighted three uh, that I feel are important. Um, other than that, I really look at the overall rating and the components, you know, the overall rating of each of those four components. And if that satisfies in me in terms of meaning they're bullish or very bullish, you know, then that checks one thing off the list that I feel a stock needs to have if I'm going to invest in it. Now, why price to sales? Well, price to sales is the ratio that compares a company's stock price to its revenue. So it's really an indicator of the value placed on each dollar of a company's revenue. So I want that to be bullish because there's a lot of high price stocks, particularly in the internet and tech sector that are way overvalued and you're paying way too much for a dollar of revenue. And if you if that stock starts to Twitter, t Twitter uh, starts to, what am I trying to say? If that stock starts to fall, there's really no place left for it to go. It'll fall hard. The other two factors that I like to look at are short interest. I mean, the short sellers are the smartest guys on Wall Street. So if they're shorting the stock, they're betting on that stock going down. So I want them to be bullish on the stocks I'm looking at, which means they don't think that stock's going to go down. They're not investing in those. And insider activity. Now, what insider activity do, does, which is really interesting, is it measures insider buying. There are a lot of charting uh, packages that use insider selling, but insiders could sell for a lot of different reasons. They may need money for a down payment on a house or a college tuition or whatever. It may have no reflection at all on the value of the stock price, but they're only going to buy it for one reason, and that's what we measure here, and they're only going to buy it if they think that stock's going to go up. So I want insiders buying. I want that to be bullish or very bullish. Uh, when I'm considering a stock to buy. So other than that, I, as I say, I really look at the overall rating on the stock. Let's go back to the human emotion problem that we all have as humans. <laughs> um, models, says uh, a famous investor and, and quant analyst, models beat human forecasters because they reliably and consistently apply the same criteria time after time as opposed to human beings who are swayed by emotions and opinions. So a model like the Chaikin Power Gauge Rating or like Mika's Payday Cycles are objective. You know, they don't, they're not swayed by anyone's opinion. It's strictly based on objectivity. And that's what you want. You know, that's what we have to have. And that makes it so much easier to make decisions when you're basing them on objective data because it's, it's pretty, it's usually a very clear cut uh, situation you know of whether a stock is one you want to invest in or one you don't or or if you are one you one you want to sell uh, and I'll show that to you in very clear-cut examples but just to give you a little more confidence in the power gauge rating uh, we now have over three indexes managed uh, with the with the power gauge rating uh, in partnership with NASDAQ so they asked us to take three of their indexes through their popular indexes, overlay the power gauge rating, weed out the stocks with bearish neutral uh, power gauge ratings and leave those that had bullish. And for the last two years where these uh, indexes have been in play, they have all uh, significantly outperformed their benchmarks. So then First Trust, uh, which is the largest uh, provider of unit investment trusts, which are like mutual funds, um, they market to money managers who then market to their clients, but they asked us to build some portfolios based on the power gauge rating as well, which we did, and the first uh, portfolio was launched in December. We now have two others. Uh, every six weeks we've in initiated another one, and all three, um, as of this da d date, are outperforming their market, outperforming their benchmarks. We now have over $50 million uh, under management with the uh, Chaikin First Trust, Unit Investments Trust. So this is the first time that money managers actually invest their clients' money in a portfolio of stocks based on the power gauge rating. So we're pretty excited about that and the fact that it's uh, outperforming. Uh, another bit of uh, confidence factor here that uh, we're quoted and, and seen on the media uh, pretty frequently as well as the major hedge funds. 
a number of you said you don't have enough time to do what you'd like to do. I know I'm one of them. We get a lot of testimonials. I'm going to kind of put them in here as appropriate. But this one speaks, I think, to a lot of our uh, challenges in that there's not enough time in the day to do the work that Chaikin puts before us in minutes. And Cheryl here says she is wowed. So I'm just going to pause here and make sure everyone's on, on the same page with me with understanding the power gauge rating because, as I say, it is the basis of what we're going to be talking about going forward and, and particularly in here on how to find the classic bull. So do you mind just chatting in, please? Um, uh, yes, if you're on board and if it's okay to keep moving. And I see PK is asking for a, a uh, video. Y yes, it will be sent out. Uh, the video will be sent out tomorrow morning. Okay, great. Lots of yeses. So super, you guys are smart. You're all on board here. So let's keep going. All right, step two. What to buy? Um, that's always the biggest question, right? How do you know what to buy? Well, we call a classic bull a stock that has these three criteria. And let's break this down now on uh, ATO. But before I do that, let me just pause here to go over this, this stock chart of how a price actually moves. Because this, when I first looked at it, I thought it was really complicated, but it's actually has proved to be really powerful and it, this also complements uh, Mika's payday cycles where he says the stock price usually moves up or down for about four days and then it goes a different way or goes sideways. This is saying the same thing and this was developed by a professor some 95 years ago and it still is true today in identifying the way a stock price moves. So unlike the retail cosmetics that I was uh, marketing at Elizabeth Arden and L'Oreal, you know, where a, a, say a bottle of, of fragrance is $100, whether you buy that fragrance today or whether you buy it six months from now, it's going to be the same price. Obviously, that's not the case with stocks, but this is how the price moves. It goes sideways and then up a bit, pulls back, goes up, you know, sideways again. You know, so this, you know, you've got to be mindful of this because this is all part of the cycle of when do you buy, when you pull that trigger. You don't want to buy it when it's up here. You want to buy it when it's down here. And that's one of our indicators as well, the oversold, overbought um, uh, indicators. So that's helpful as well. But let's, let's break down this Atmos Energy with these three factors that make up what we call a classic bull. First of all, the power gauge rating, which is this ribbon along the bottom, needs to be bullish. Really, to understand these charts, all you need to understand is that green is good and red is bad. And you want to invest in green stocks and sell red stocks. If you understand that, you're 90% there. As you can see, the power gauge rating has been green for at most, meaning our 20 factors indicate that this stock is going to outperform the market over the ensuing three to six months. And it also usually holds true for the near term too. Back testing, we have tons of back testing uh, in real time and, and uh, back testing time in our website. But I just say, look at the chart. If it's green, it's saying it's outperforming the next three to six months. Is this price going up? Yeah, it is, right? So this is saying the stock's going to outperform, it's going to go up, and it went up. That's really seen right there. Relative strength is this um, kind of heat map, this red-green heat map here. And this measures how strong this, stock, this particular stock is relative to the S&P 500. And as I said earlier, if you want average returns, just invest in a S&P 500 index fund. And you know, don't bother with all this. But if you want to outperform and get returns, you know, they're in the 20s, 30s, 40s, you know, 60s as I've done, then you you want to buy stocks that are only you want to only buy stocks that are outperforming the S&P 500, and that this shows it pretty, very clearly. Money flow, you know, this is what I alluded to earlier as well. The check-in money flow is a technical indicator Mark created some 35 years ago that's still on every charting package today. 
What this does is it measures institutional money going in and out of a stock. And why is that important? Well, the professionals and, and their buying and selling is what moves the price because it's all based on supply and demand. So when they're buying, as you can see these heavy periods of uh, green here, the price tends to go up because there's less, there's less supply of that. And just think of it as the whole supply supply demand side. If a lot of people want the same thing, it's scarce, therefore you're going to pay more for it. And the reverse is true, you know, on the downside. If the institutions are selling, you typically see the price go sideways or down. So this is an enormously helpful indicator to look at uh, when you're evaluating any stock. So how did I end up buying this? Well. I had this on my watch list uh, since the end of December and I keep a watch list of stocks that I uh, flip through every day and then I keep a second list of stocks that I own. I typically own you know, 8, 10, 12 stocks at, at once. Other than that, it gets into information overload. So you know, my whole methodology is to keep it simple. 8 to 10, 12 stocks on my, my stocks list. And then I've got stocks that I put onto a watch list, but I only look at the stocks that are very bullish or bullish when I'm flipping through. When I get to those that have turned neutral, I'm out. I'm out of the list. I wait for them to come up again to the top if I want to consider them. So it keeps it pretty simple. So I had this stock on my watch list, and utilities had been really strong in January and February, which are typically uh, true in these, you know, uncertain times that certainly uh, January and February caused for most investors. Um, it's now still okay, it's in the top third industry group, um, which is still okay. So I bought this uh, back where this arrow is and I have overlaid one of our sell signal, buy, buy sell signals, which are the momentum breakout. These are these little green triangles. If I were to overlay the uh, oversold buy signals, there would be a, a triangle right here. I wanted to keep the momentum because you can see there's a recent momentum on this and you can see what's happened recently. The stock has even gone higher since that momentum breakout, which typically is what happens. But there was an oversold buy signal down here at about 64 and so I bought it. Um, I bought it here and then it came up here to this upper volatility band and these are shaken proprietary bands that kind of keep track of the normal range of a stock. So when it's hitting up against this dotted line up here, that can be a really good time to say, hey, you know, this is a really good time to take the profit. So it was approaching that and I thought I'm just going to get out because there was, you know, there's still so much um, back and forth with stock prices going up and down um, back in the spring. So I said, okay, I'm going to take my profit um, and get out, which is what I did. Um, it's now doing really well. It was up to like 77 today. I put this back on my watch list and you can see here there was a recent momentum uh, breakout buy on this just on the 19th and that was at like 74.50. So, you know, Keep a list. I mean, so many in, uh, investors that we work with, you know, just they want to have the ideas at the ready. So take out a pad and pencil, if you will, and just start making a list of these stock ideas and put ATO on your list. This is a, this is still a great stock. I would wait for this to pull back, and that's where this overbought, oversold indicator comes in handy, because this measures those Wyckoff peaks and valleys. You want to sell when it's up here, you know, like I did when it peaked up here. I sold it. Because inevitably that stock will pull back, you know, which again complements exactly what Mika says. You know, the stock's not going to go up forever; it's going to pull back. You want to, you know, buy it when it's on one of these pullbacks, and this helps you identify it. So you want to buy the stock when it's back down here in the 30 range, not when it's still up here in you know the 65 range. So put this on your watch list and and just watch it, you know, and wait for this overbought, oversold indicator to pull back. So how did I find this? Okay, so this is really the secret sauce. You know, this is, I think, the biggest deal of Chaikin Analytics, and we've recently launched this um, capability within Chaikin. It's called a screener, 
it doesn't look very sexy here, right? But boy, is this thing powerful. And what this allows you to do is to take a universe of stocks, put in your own criteria, and then sort it up according to those criteria. So what I did, this is how I found ATO uh, back in December. I plugged in into the screener, I only want stocks in strong industry groups. You know, that's one of our steps. So I immediately went from a universe of the Russell 3000 down to almost 600. I only want stocks that are bullish or very bullish. These are those three factors that I like, price to sales, insider activity, short interest. I want those all to be strong. That now got me down to 30 stocks. And then I want money flow and relative strength to be strong. So I ended up with eight. I mean, you can see, and I literally did that screen in less than a minute. And then you can put this into the workstation as its own separate list and flip through each of these stocks. Uh, that's how I bought ATO. That's how I bought and subsequently sold a Bruker as well. But this is a this is like so easy, and th this really is the secret sauce of Taken. So let's jump ahead to April to a screener that I did. Um, early April for a presentation. Again, I plugged in the same criteria and I came out with five stocks. So rather than looking through, you know, the Russell 3000 uh, or even bigger lists, I'm immediately able to hone in on five stocks. I mean, talk about solving the information overload problem. I mean, this is, this is phenomenal. So I went through these stock charts. I liked NCS. I put that into my watch list. And you can see here on this yellow arrow, this is where I where I bought it. This stock is up 30, 31% year to date. And this is in the strong building products group, uh, which is in the top third of the 64 industry groups, which is good. Uh, that's how it came up on the screener at the time. Um, the screener selects the top 20% industry groups and at the time it was in the top 20 percent uh, it's now in the top third which is still okay but I added this to my watch list in April after I saw it on that screener and I waited a few weeks till I got a buy signal and here's that oversold buy signal right here and you can see how it correlates to this nice dip in price lower than 30 but everything else lined up strong money flow strong relative strength and strong power gauge rating. So I had great confidence um, that this stock was going to do well and in fact it has. You know I bought it at 15 and it's gone up. It you know pulled back last week with everything else but I, I'm very confident that this stock is going to continue to uh, march upward. So this is another great stock idea. Um, when I look at a stock I drill down on this power gauge rating here so I can get those four components and, and I can also drill down on those uh, 20 factors that make up those four components. Um, but that's, you know, that's really how simple it is. When you screen for them, the, that you can already check that off your list because they wouldn't end up in the screener unless they had those criteria already established. So that's the classic bull. Um, I'm going to move on now to step three, which is industry group. I've been referring to this. Um, and what does this mean? Why is this important? Well, 50% of a price move is attributed to the industry group, and that's according to research, particularly by uh, Zach's uh, research who actually comes up with these industry groups. Um, you want to be in a strong industry group because Look at the average stock. The average stock in a strong industry group is most likely to outperform even a stronger stock if it's in a weak industry group. So we say put the wind at your back. Go with strong stocks and strong industry groups. I mean, that's kind of a no-brainer, right? If you're going to buy a stock to hold as an investment, um, or even if you're looking at call options or ETFs, you want to go with stocks that are strong. And this is the easiest way to have that work for you. Strong stocks in strong industry groups. Now there's 64 industry groups. We rank them in high-low sequence based on the proportion of strong stocks. So you're going to see in our list mode here under industry, oil integrated is today's strongest industry group. Home furnishings is second. 
and so on. Um, the screener, however, uh, does the work for you. So unless you're really you know, focusing on a particular industry, industry group, I think it's easier just to use that screener. And the screener will include all of the, uh, the top 20% of industry groups and kind of do that sorting for you. So I pulled a screener yesterday. So let's see what's going on right now um, and where the opportunities are. So yesterday I did the same thing, you know, same criteria. And I got, looks like about 10 stocks. And let's look at these ones that I've highlighted here. So this stock is in the home furnishings. Remember I just showed you that was number three in terms of industry group strength. So that's a very strong industry group. This stock is up 37% so far this year. I own it. I bought it back here um, May 20th on a relative strength uh, buy signal. And that's that little arrow here. And you can see I overlaid relative strength to, get, to show where I bought it. So I bought this at 50. You know, it's up 16% since, since then. It's up now um, at 59 uh, today. This was yesterday's chart. So this is a great stock too, but guess what I'm going to say? Look at the overbought, oversold. Would you buy this now? Just type yes or no. Is this a stock you think you should buy right now? You just put yes or no into your um, chat box. A lot of no's. Awesome. Okay. Wait till it bottoms out. You you got it. Perfect. A plus, A plus. Okay, good. Yeah, so wait for it to pull back because it inevitably will, you know, and then you buy it if everything is still remains as strong as it appears. So that's the way you use this. You know, you don't have to buy it right away. Just because I'm saying it's a great stock idea doesn't mean go out and buy it tomorrow. Wait for the right time. And that price inevitably will pull back a little bit. Okay, so let's look at what else the screener found for us. Quad graphics. Has anyone heard of quad graphics? <laughs> I haven't. Um, I hadn't heard of Neko either, but uh, you know these. This this is how you find these stocks that you don't even know what they are. But it doesn't matter. You know these are strong stocks in strong industry groups. Uh, this is in the 13th industry group, industrial products, and this also is a great stock idea. I mean, look at this stock. It's gone up 130 percent. Who wouldn't have liked to have had this one back in January at one eight, when it's now you know 22. That's pretty cool. And look, you got these nice momentum. If I'd had this on my watch list, obviously it didn't fit all the criteria. Um, therefore, it wasn't on my, one of my earlier screeners. But you know, this still is a stock that I think is a great stock idea. Um, but again, I'd wait for this overbought, oversold to come back a little bit further down 30. You don't want to be buying at the upper volatility band. That's really when you want to be selling and taking your profit. So wait for this to pull back some. And watch it. You know, another secret of mine is I, before I buy a stock, I go onto Yahoo Finance or, or Nasdaq.com and check the news. You know, and see what if there's anything significant in there that I think would affect the price. But look at this strong money flow, and look what happened. Once that money flow kicked in, that's how powerful money flow is. Because look, it's it's like half the value here. Everything else is the same. But look what happens when this really kicks in. And there, I'm sure there were some money flow signals on here as well, buy signals. But look what happens. That price really takes off from 12 to, you know, 21. Doubled. That's the power of money flow. That's why you want to use these indicators. And I, and I, love, I love money flow. <laughs> I really depend on that. Okay, let's look at one of the other stocks that they recommended to us. Um, Nucor, this is a steel, does something to do in steel. This also is in a top industry group. And uh, this one's up 23%. Now this one has pulled back here. So this, this is a likely candidate to buy um, in the near term. And you can see money flow is strong, strong relative strength, strong power gauge rating for the last month or so. So if I, you know, put this on your list, NUE, 
uh, check it out on Yahoo Finance. See if there's anything going on, and um, this could be a good candidate to buy. And you can see there was a recent momentum breakout uh, signal. What I like to do when I overlay them is look at the past signals. Now, in this case, um, there wasn't an earlier momentum, but that can also give you uh, confidence whether the signals on this particular stock uh, are, are, are accurate. Because um, they work like 70% of the time. They're a great help for timing, uh, but they're not perfect. I mean, nothing in the stock market is perfect. So they're accurate about 70% of the time. So another one of our testimonials here is from Eric. He'd only, in March, been using Shaken for several weeks, and you can quickly and clearly see when to go long or short. Quick and clear are the operative words here. I've already closed at two trades for gains of 70% and 115%. Over the years, I've tried different software packages and programs. Shaken is by far the most straightforward analysis product I've ever used. So let's move on now. Is it OK um, to move on to knowing what to sell or what to avoid? Um, now that we've gone through the classic bulls and the industry groups, uh, just give me an okay if you would or a go. <laughs> um, so everyone's um, good with me continuing. Great. Okay. Thank you all. I will move forward. All right. What to avoid? Well, it's just as important to avoid losses and get out of stocks or not get into them in the first place as it is to find great stocks to buy. And in this way, the classic bear is the opposite, the reverse of the classic bull. The Wyckoff chart works in the same way. The stock doesn't just plummet to the bottom in a straight line. It does all this zigging and zagging and all this, I call it zigging and zagging. It's not a technical term, but that's a sandy term. So let's look at a recent example. Joe, who introduced us on the webinar, had been talking about this with our subscribers for weeks. He holds a uh, bi-weekly open forum with, with all of our subscribers and alerts them to changes in the marketplace, what to expect, and also uh, specific um, stock ideas, this being one, one of them, which was fantastic. So there was a relative strength, see these little sell signals instead of green, they're red. That means you want to sell, not buy. This stock dropped 17% just the other day on the 16th. You can see this drop right here. I mean, you don't want to be holding on to a stock that's dropping 17%, right? But Chaken users knew not to own this stock or to add a, a put option onto this, which many of them did. But look at this, power gauge rating consistently bearish for a year. Relative strength underperforming since about last fall. Money flow negative. And this is just one pair of the six pairs of, of cell signals. The others all had triangles triggering as well. So you were, you know, Chaken users were forewarned to get out of this stock as early, you know, when this chart is up around when it was 75 and it's now at 39. Um, as recently as the 9th of June, there were actually two signals. I, I can't, I can only overlay one. I overlaid, overlaid money flow, but there also was a relative strength sell signal on the same date at uh, 51, you know, before this 16% drop to you know, 39. So th this is powerful stuff, guys. You know, this is this is stuff you really want to be mindful of and be using, and it'll keep you out of. And as it did for Chris, um, Chris, this is just from the 16th of June, a couple of days ago. Today, I made my biggest profit of 150% from buying a put option on CAVM a few days earlier. So Chris was a very happy new subscriber, and thanked Joe profusely. Right, Joe? So let's look at Apple. This is obviously everyone's favorite stock. And um, Mika, I know you've you spent a lot of time on Apple as well, so you'll have opinions on this as well. But we've been bearish on this stock uh, for most of the spring since May, underperforming the market. 
and kind of in and out money flow. But we've also had some sell signals along the way. And June 1st, there was this relative strength uh, sell signal at 99, the stock's now at 95. You know, so that would have helped you uh, had you owned this stock. Um, but let's move back here to when they reported earnings. Because they reported earnings in April. Oh, yeah, right in here. And right beforehand, uh, because I can only overlay one set, one pair onto a chart at once, but there was a sell signal right up here before they dropped uh, 6% after they reported earnings. They dropped from 102 to 97 and now the stock has dropped further to 95. So um, this is not a stock I would want to own uh, just because what you're looking at here, bearish power gauge rating, bearish relative strength, money flow is okay, but that is not enough to support for me a buy sit decision. Mika, hey, do you want to add anything hey, here on Apple? You're the Apple expert. Yeah. Thanks. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, this is such a great example here because if you look down at the chicken power gauge, you know, there's only uh, maybe a week where it was green. So this chicken power gauge was basically not bullish, uh, more neutral for most of the last year. And then, you know, recently over the last few months, it's getting more and more bearish. Uh, but if you kind of stick to the formula, you know, buying stocks that have bullish chicken power gauge ratings and kind of keeping those in your portfolio. I think this shows a clear example here of a, of a stock where that was uh, clearly the case. And I think what this really helps you do is as Sandy's kind of going through all these different elements, all the different steps and looking at it is helping everybody see through the muddle of um, the metal of news and media and hype and also the love that people have for stocks, especially for something like Apple. I know a lot of people have been doing the, um, you know, buy Apple leaps or stock and hold forever. And, you know, at, there's a certain point to which that you kind of have to reevaluate that thinking. And I think that this uh, chart that Sandy has up here with Apple is a great reflection of that because everybody who kind of held Apple uh, during the last year has been kind of suffering. You know, it hit a high of 134. It's now trading back below $100. Everybody's kind of feeling the pain, but they have this feeling of, gosh, but I love the stock and I use all Apple products. And sometimes you just have to see through that, that love for a stock into the real numbers. And what Sandy is showing here really helps to do that. So I just kind of want to add that in there. Mika, thanks so much. That's really great because that really supports the whole objective view and the objectivity that you have to bring to a stock as opposed to love and emotion. I remember in our early days when we first um, launched uh, Shaken Analytics, I was talking to a woman who owned GE and we had a very bearish rating on GE uh, as well. This chart looked worse than this. And she said, oh, you've given me a you know a bearish rating on my beloved GE. And I said to her, you know, there, Anne, there, there are no beloved stocks. You know, the stocks are either bullish or bearish. And if they're bullish, you want to keep them. If they're bearish, you want to sell them. You know, it's, it's really that simple. So as Mika said, you can't, you know, you can't mix your, your feelings, you know, with your money. You know, yeah. it's your money. You know, you got to take it. You got to take it seriously. Money. And if you absolutely can't sell your Apple, you know, or your stock or whatever it is, at least, you know, sell some calls, uh, buy some puts, move into a more protective state um, when the power gauge becomes more bearish so that at least you have some insurance in case it goes down and you're not kind of, you know, looking in hindsight wishing that uh, you would have taken action earlier. So at least put yourself into a protective position. Uh, if you absolutely can't bring yourself to, to sell it, you know. And a lot of people can't. I've talked to a lot of people. I mean, it is the number oh, one. Oh, I know. The most <laughs> no. popular stock, as you well know. Uh, people are very tied to Apple. So. Okay, well, let's look at a uh, kind of a byproduct of Apple, which is Skyworks. They provide chips um, for the Apple computers. So 
in like step, you know, they have declined as Apple has declined. And this really supports the whole concept that buy and hold doesn't work anymore. Uh, used to be when my father invested in stocks, you know, he'd have them for, you know, 10 years. Uh, that doesn't work now. You know, things are moving too quickly. As this chart clearly shows, this, this stock was the number one growth stock of 2014. It was up like 134% that year. And now look at it, it's down 13%. So, and everything is, is declining. So, again, you know, this is, this is an objective view. You know, this isn't my opinion. And this is an objective view of what's going on with this stock. And it's going in tandem with Apple, which makes sense since they supply the chips for them. All right, big news yesterday and today still, Tesla, uh, what a disaster. We have been uh, bullish, uh, or, I'm sorry, we've been bearish on this stock since um, going back 2014 off this chart uh, with some you know, minor periods of neutral. But you can see here, well before the announcement came out yesterday of uh, them buying Solar City, which is also bearish, um, we were very bearish on this stock. It was pretty much flat, so it was like not under. It was neutral with the S and P 500, but a bearish power gauge rating and uh, negative money flow and sell signals along the way. Um, so again, this is a stock that a lot of people I feel are emotional about because you know it's been in the news a lot. It's kind of sexy and. Uh, but it's your money, you know, and you can't you can't risk your money this way and put it put it uh, in jeopardy. Um, the short seller, I heard. Can Andrew I add a couple left? things here too? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Absolutely. I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, uh, go ahead. So Tesla is another one of those great examples where you know people are in love with Elon Musk, and although I think you know he's doing wonderful things in trying to make the world a better place, as the entrepreneurial says. Uh, in the whole green revolution and stuff like that, I think Sandy's right on. It's your money. You have to be really careful for it, uh, with it. And just because something is a bearish power gauge rating doesn't mean it's not tradable. Tesla is a fantastic tradable stock. As one of my mentors says, Tesla is one of those stocks that you shouldn't own, but you, sh you could trade. It's got a lot of beta tradable. And uh, when you look at the way options are constructed, uh, when you buy puts and the stock drops, volatility skyrockets so that you could actually make a lot more money uh, sometimes buying puts and shorting things versus buying calls when they go up because volatility drops when call stocks go up. So the the point I'm trying to make here is that, again, don't fall in love with a stock. Use that shake and power gauge rating. And just because it's bearish doesn't mean you can't trade it. It's still tradable, but it's, t it's basically saying don't buy the stock and own the stock. I think that's the point there. Trade it with a with a put option is what you're saying. Yeah, trade it with a put option or you know something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and we have an overlay with options play, so we actually actually integrate make options uh, trading really easy by giving you three strategies. You know, highlighting the one that's the most favored. Mm -hmm. So this options play integration that we have is phenomenal and has really facilitated options trading. There's not enough time to go over it today, but Joe gives sessions on this twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays at, what, 2 o'clock, I think, Joe, every week for our subscribers so that you can learn how to trade options with options play and shaken. But, I mean, you can see these sell signals would help you. Yesterday, the stock was down 10%, as I've uh, highlighted here. And the short seller, Andrew, um, CNBC yesterday, I heard him at the, after the close, and he said he's been for a long time on Tesla and uh, kind of another uh, nail in the coffin is that uh, the stock lost more market value yesterday with that 10% drop than it would have paid for Solar City because it said they were they, Elon Musk said he was going to pay 2.7 billion in cash and he lost more than that in market value yesterday when this stock price dropped so I, yeah as, as, as Mika says it's tradable but um, you, know, you, you don't have to be a market analyst to figure out that this isn't something you want to own. You want to 
short or use a put option on it. Okay, thanks for that input. Uh, Chipotle uh, next another example and by now your eyes are probably getting used to seeing these charts and being able to identify these patterns pretty quickly of this persistent red 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 with these red triangles going down I mean, they've had a terrible time with um, virus breakouts and, and closings of stores because of infection and stuff so they've just had a really horrible time I mean again this is as we would say this is a stock that's very tradable because I mean look at these downward moves on this you know with these sell signals to help you with those put options so again options play we gave a webinar in April where we had an overlay on this of the options play three strategies and of the three strat strategies if someone took the recommended one they would have more than three times made up their, their money uh, today you know if they had kept with that strategy. So these are tradable you know, as, as options. Do you want to add anything here, Mika? You see anything you want to add to this? Because I'm just about... Yeah, um, the... CMG, another one of those great examples. I think um, if, if I'm correct, you guys actually made this your bearish stock of the week when it was up close to 450 and told everybody to start shorting this thing and now that it's starting to drop, you know, everybody kind of uh, should have made a, a, a ton of cash on it. This is one of those great examples where the chicken power gauge was already bearish. It had a ton of really bad press, really bad headlines. And whenever a company who has its whole marketing strategy and branding based around selling really great food and making people feel great about that, when the whole thing gets flipped around and starts making people sick, that kind of stuff takes a long time to recover from. And, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, when I walk down Santa Barbara, Barbara, where I live, down the street, there's nobody in the the Chipotle places anymore, and so that's you know another clear example of you know their revenues dropping big time, and the chicken money flow reflects that perfectly. Yeah, thank you. So true. So a few more uh, testimonials supporting the whole options play uh, integration that um, Harry here, who's a again a new subscriber this year. He was up over $17,000 in February just with options trades on Google, Amazon, and Priceline. It's all from checking the power gauge rating. This is a godsend. He's been a subscriber for not even two weeks. Uh, you've changed our life. We've gotten consistently uh, testimonials from Harry as he's, as, as he's been trading profitable, profitably. Okay, the last... Um, step to our five-step methodology is to know when to buy and sell. I've been alluding to these six pairs of buy-sell signals um, and I'm not going to go on over them any more in any more detail because of, of time constraints but only to say okay how do you know when they've triggered or how do you find them? Well I told you earlier on I keep two lists one of my stocks and one I call Sandy's watch list and I overlay this alerts view which is this little bell and that immediately overlays these buy signals, sell signals and any other alerts like power gauge rating changes or, or uh, analyst estimate changes that could affect the price. So I immediately get a summary uh, every morning when I log on of my watch list and I get the similar su summary on my stock list to see what changes have happened overnight there. And you can see here that today there were a lot of oversold buy signals um, and a few reversal buys on stocks that I'm following. So let's just look at DTE um, quickly and see what this oversold buy signal looks like. Well, first of all, when I overlay this, I can see historical ones to know whether they really triggered at the right time or not. And they were okay ton of money coming in. That's a great sign. It is oversold. Otherwise, that oversold buy wouldn't have triggered. Money flow is strong and power is strong. So this, again, is, is, a, is a good stock idea. This is in Utility Electrics. It's now in the, about the top third industry group. Uh, 
and this I, this again I would put on the on the watch list and look at that huge money flow and remember what happened on that other stock example when this kind of money was going in that price really accelerated so you know I'm confident that that's that's something I can say is a good stock idea for you all right so let's recap uh, these five steps this is the secret to finding great stocks Follow a methodology that you trust. For us, that's the Chaikin Power Gauge rating. You want to know what to buy. That's the classic bull pattern that we outlined. You want to buy strong stocks in strong industry. Screener do the work for you and screen for those very quickly. And you also know what to avoid or what to sell. Those are the classic bears. And know when to buy and sell. And those are, of course, the buy-sell signals that we've just covered. But the bottom line is that, you know, as you could see from my earlier example of what happened to me in 08, 09 when I didn't have control, uh, we all need to take control um, of, a, of our investments. As Tom said earlier, you know, nobody cares more about your money than you do. And you can't even trust the pros all the time. You know, this is something uh, Jim Cramer got really wrong. He was louting EXXI for months this spring and if you had looked at the Chaikin power gauge rating in the Chaikin chart you would have seen this stock was a disaster uh, and it subsequently filed for bankruptcy in April so you know even the, even the pros get it wrong so you've got to have your own objective view of where this where the stock is headed and Peter here is is one of our pros um, but he he follows the Chaikin methodology and he gets it right <laughs> Um, he said, I figured out how to make Chaikin even easier for regular investors to find the really good stuff and concentrate on buying and selling only them. I've also decided to get rid of other services I've been using for years because this one makes a whole lot more sense. Um, so that's what I've shared with you in this last hour. Another testimonial is from Jim. After getting hammered last August, he decided to take advantage of what Chaikin really offers, that is a better night's sleep and some impressive returns. Rather than swinging for the fences, that's letting that emotion get in the way and striking out, I've learned to do what the system tells me and to enjoy my 16% return. Thanks to Mark, Joe, and the entire Chaikin team for giving my confidence and a good night's sleep back again. And I always like to circle back to confidence because I really feel confidence is the foundation for making a profitable investor. If you're not confident about the decisions you're making, you're not going to make good decisions. It's pretty, it's it's that simple. Um, so having confidence is really critical. You know, as I found out the hard way. Um, so that's what I'm, I'm feel really passionate about is instilling the confidence in you, so that, that you go out there and make great decisions, and and you can do it. Good heavens, if I can do this, um, you know, with with no prior experience in, in finance or economics. Many of you who have far more experience in those fields than I can can be um, can be whizzes at it. So my promise that I would tell you my secrets to beating the pros and how to find winning stocks quickly and easily have, has hopefully been given to you, um, and all of that is so that we can take some enjoyment out of life and think about where you want to spend your next profits. You know, think about where you want to spend those profits. Uh, from stocks that you're going to be trading, either long, short, puts or calls, but you know, have some thoughts in mind of how you want to spend that money in addition to putting it towards your uh, retirement plan. So all of this is possible using uh, Chaikin and our what we call the Financial Freedom Fast Track Package, uh, which includes you know, the screener, uh, as we've demonstrated today, and what I obviously didn't have time to do was this options um, integration, which is which is really equally awesome. Um, many of our subscribers have really uh, profited since we've added these two features recently. Uh, Mark here had a 90% average return in his first six earnings trades using options play and the earnings features. Yeah, that's another overlay we do. You can find out when a stock is reporting earnings, and since there's tends to be high volatility around earnings season, it's really helpful to identify that. 
All very simple trades. Chaikin makes the process fast and efficient, so instead of getting bogged down in due diligence, I was trading. In other words, we solve the information overload problem and get you right to the critical information quickly and easily. And one more from JD. He thinks uh, Chaikin started out great, but with the options and screener additions, it's the best product on the market. So we want to make you all uh, part of our Chaikin uh, family. The annual subscription is usually uh, $3,300, so half of that would be $1,750, but we're going to make it even better for you uh, with an even better offer than half off. Uh, just to add in, many of these things I didn't get to cover, but your uh, fast track package comes not only with an annual subscription to Chaikin Analytics, it comes with that options uh, play overlay, Mark's market insights, which is what Mika referred to with Chipotle. Mark puts out a, a commentary with stock ideas every Sunday night for our subscribers, and many of our subscribers just depend on that research for their buy-sell ideas, including uh, shorting Chipotle. Uh, coaching calls, and I highlight this in red because I just find this so incredibly powerful that uh, Joe and Michelle, when, when, when you subscribe, Joe and Michelle will get you into what we call a, a rapid results quick start coaching call as early as tomorrow. These are small groups where they will walk you through the features and benefits of Chaikin, how to use it, and then if you're not comfortable with that, they'll schedule a one-on-one -on -one session with you to go over your investing style and how to integrate Chaikin with that, which I find is pretty, pretty amazing. Uh, also, the Chaikin Insiders community, those are the bi-weekly online forums I referred to where Joe uh, came up with uh, CAVM and has been talking about that bear stock for a number of weeks, which many of our subscribers profited from. And then we also have that screener that I told you about. We've got the earnings feature, which I didn't get into, but that's the overlay. And then there's a morning note every morning from our chief market strategist, as well as you, those of you that like to drill down onto sectors have a, a new uh, sector performance view. So that's a lot to take into account, <laughs> uh, uh, but we want to make you uh, part of the Chaikin community and the offer tonight is to subscribe by midnight and get the annual subscription with all those uh, features and benefits thrown in for $1,650 a year. So there's a number of ways to subscribe. You can call that number if you've got some questions. Uh, you can order online. Uh, or you can email us as well, sales at chickenanalytics.com. So I, I know, uh, Joe, you and Michelle have been trying to answer the questions along the way. Those that haven't been answered will be answered by our customer success team. They'll reach out to you with the reply. Um, and that pretty much closes it for me. Um, Mika, you have any, anything you want to add before we... Yeah, definitely, Sandy. Thank you so much for your presentation today. Uh, I found it incredibly educational and I just I love your story uh, I just want to let everybody everybody here know I've been a, a Chaikin member for I think going on two and a half years now and I still think it's the single best platform for fundamental analysis they make it so easy to find stocks uh, as Sandy displayed today and definitely jump on this great offer she's she has here for your annual membership uh, couldn't say more enough good stuff about it it's really great and uh, again, thank you so much, Sandy, for your presentation today. It was awesome. Mika, thank you, and thank you for sharing your community with us, too. It was a real pleasure and honor to work with you. You're, you're very welcome. All right. Good night, all. All right, everybody. Well, have a great evening. I know there's a lot of questions regarding our screener profiles. Uh, make sure to attend tomorrow's onboard session, again, available for all of our subscribers. If you attend there, we're going to do a special tomorrow regarding um, our uh, screener profiles. I know we have a lot of screener requests for um, 
for swing trades. So we'll make sure to cover that again, two o'clock Eastern time tomorrow. Just go right to our resources page. You'll be able to register for that. But again, uh, best way to do that if you're not already a Chaken subscriber is to take advantage of Sandy's offer that is available in the chat room right now. Um, or again, just go to chakenanalytics.com forward slash Sandy. So again, uh, on behalf of uh, Sandy and Micah, thank you so much for coming out this afternoon. Have a great evening and we will see you tomorrow.